What $2.5 million gets you at Super Bowl 58 all access? I think this is just for a base box suite. And I'm already going to tell you before we even watch this video that it's probably not worth it. Just seeing that $2.5 million, dude, what are, what are, what are, they, what are they possibly going to offer you where that makes sense to watch uh, a two-hour football game? I'm standing just off the Las Vegas Strip and just outside Allegiant Stadium, which is home of the Las Vegas Raiders and, more importantly, host of the 2024 Super Bowl. Between the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Francisco 49ers, at $1.9 billion, Allegiant Stadium is the second most expensive stadium in the world. It has all the features that a modern super stadium should have, like a crazy futuristic roof, a nightclub in the end zone. Right, I'm going to have a crazy take here that might piss people off. If you're watching a football game and the nose bleeds, you shouldn't even be there. Doesn't make sense. It's not entertaining. What point? If you're, if, if you, if you, I know the majority of the people, even in decent seats, are probably going to be watching a lot of that on the jumbo. But if you're in nosebleed seats and you can't even see the players, you're just watching the TV screen. I know it's the atmosphere, but dude, I have the, I have the same take about concerts and everything. I'm not saying you have to have the cream of the crop fucking front row tickets, but if you're so high up, that the players look like ants. It's not worth it. Man, I want to light that thing. Now, we all know what Las Vegas is historically known for. Stay away from the tables. The house always wins. For entering into an era where Vegas is throwing major investments into sports. So in many ways, the 2024 Super Bowl is a coming out party, proving that the city of Las Vegas has arrived as the sports capital of the world. And nobody throws a party quite like Vegas. That's the gambling capital of the world. I wouldn't say the sports capital of the world. Which is why today, we're going to take you through the full VIP experience. From top, to bottom, how much it costs, what you're gonna eat, where you're gonna sit, who you're gonna meet, and we're even gonna talk to some of the people who make it all happen. Nothing is off limits, because this is GQ All Access. You've come to the crown jewels of NFL Stadium, Allegiant Stadium, home of the all Super- All right, 2.5 million dollars. You're gonna get some Chick-fil-A. You get complimentary Chick-fil-A. Does that make it worth it? You get a bartender. Oh, really? Free bush light peach. So it's mid-morning. It's very cool out here. It almost makes you want to suit up. I mean, I don't know if you guys know this, but I can kick a pretty mean field goal. So oh. Jets, Raiders, if you need me today, call me. We're in the middle of the Nevada desert. The sun is All right, I'm going to have a genuine fucking question here that I had a whole argument with my fucking expert football friends about. What fucking differentiates a good football punter versus a great football punter? I don't know. I, I don't. I understand what differentiates every other position, right? Fucking long snapper. You could have stats, your kicker. Yeah, whatever, right? If you're, if you're a fucking NFL punter, what made you get drafted more so than another guy? Because when I'm watching NFL punters punt the ball, they're never really landing it where they need to. I know ideally they want to land it as close to the fucking uh, like end goal as they can without it going into that because they want them to be as close to like the one yard line. But they never fucking do it. Like they never fucking do it. And I know it's not just, oh, they can kick the ball far because every fucking college D1 player could kick it 100 yards. I don't feel any of that in here. In fact, it feels a little bit like you're on a stage. That's because Allegiant Stadium features a fully enclosed translucent roof, uniquely designed to protect players and fans from the burning Nevada sun. Prior to the move to Las Vegas, the Raiders played in Oakland at the Coliseum. The stadium was old, but we embraced it, it was ours. The Oakland Coliseum was notoriously the last stadium in the US to be shared by a professional baseball and football team. Man, I hated that diamond for the first half of the season, honestly. We never practiced on the dirt. Yeah. We're at the same disadvantages as the other team as well. That's right, it was a baseball diamond on a football field, or actually a football field field with a baseball diamond right in the Wait, middle what that's what the stadium was like a football field with a baseball diamond right in the middle of it needless to say not all of the oakland raiders enjoyed sharing a field with the oakland athletics i remember our first game i'm like hey they didn't finish putting the field down because there's like third base right there no one says anything to me okay the game starts and it's still out there and that was just what it was with allegiant stadium the raiders finally get a gridiron to call their own in the form of a retractable bermuda grass field that lives outside and gets rolled Ooh. in Ooh. in on game day oh my god 
playing on anything other than grass was non-negotiable for safety. Then you got the Bills Stadium covered in fucking seven feet of snow. <laughs> They're paying the fans to shovel that shit off because it's a vibe or some shit to be there. Everybody's in snow pants shoveling their fucking seat. Safety reasons. To learn more, I caught up with Zachary Longnecker, Allegiant Stadium's head groundskeeper, and more importantly, it's Grass Whisperer. What time do you get here on game day? My wife would tell you that it's if it's a one o'clock game, I'll be here at 3, 4 a.m. I like turning on the lights, being the only one here. You know, everybody talks to the grass. When you're a groundskeeper, you're like, just please hold. I check on every piece of the pedals. Uh, I do touch every every grain of grass that will be stepped on today. Uh, I let them know that athletes are going to be around, so they better be on their best behavior. Uh, there will be some fine players stepping on this field. Travis Kelsey, Patty Mahomes, Patty Big Mahomes, Isaiah Pacheco, right? All of these motherfuckers will be stepping on this field. I don't want them to disrespect uh, disrespect the players, and then the players will respect them. Like, I only need two more games out of you. So you get a little weird, you know, when you're a grass guy. I mean, that's just a thing. Do you have a lawn at home? No. Can you explain to me how the tray works, how you Sometimes guys Sometimes I sing to them if they're looking a little weak, strengthen their spirits a little bit. I know some of these big O linemen are going to be crushing them. Pull in the grass, but keep it outside. We have one 90,000 square foot tray that lives in the south. You want it to have 100% sun as long as you can. Steel tray, it weighs as much as the Eiffel Tower. If you're keeping score at home, that's 10,000 tons. It's got 100 one horsepower motors. I only have 10 inches to grow the grass, so I have two inches of drainage, then I have an inch of irrigation pipes. Realistically, I'm growing grass in six of sand for 300 pound men to beat the crap out of each other on Sundays. What makes like a, for a good grass surface in the NFL? Firm and fast, 100% grass. Firm and fast, okay. Right, and safe, right? It's all about safety. Some teams in the NFL are growing their grass to an inch. We're at like a half inch right now. Josh Jacobs and Devontae Adams, they want- uh, Is every NFL field grass? I thought some were turf. A quick, fast surface when they plant, they just yeah. go. Yeah. You're only as good as your last field. And you don't want to be the reason why, let's just say, some player goes down. Turf is ass. Turf hurts. You ever fucking slide on turf? Of my New York Jets. Yeah, maybe. So I've got all access to the stadium today. What should I see? Torch is great. The Winfield Club looks like a good little party. Yeah. Do you know where I press the button to light the torch? Uh, you got to talk to the big boss. Can you just tell me? Like, yeah. So you, you do know where it is. You're just not going to tell me. <laughs> One way or another, I am going to light that torch. But in the meantime, let's check out some seats. One. Two, three Super Bowls? That's pretty good. So right now I'm sitting very far forward. Great access to the field, right behind the home bench. It's also nice because the- I feel like that's ideal seats. Honestly, not even there. I'd want to be like right there. Middle of the field, that's the shit. Because then you got the fucking whole view. Bench. It's also nice because these seats, they have a little cushion. And those seats over there don't quite have that cushion. During the regular season, these seats ain't cheap. But during the Super Bowl, they really ain't cheap. They could cost you anywhere from 20 to 50K. I, I like, I don't, I don't get it, man. Like, even if I was rich, bro. Like, if I had like million, like I make good money. That is not ever worth it in my mind, bro. Ever. I, the, even if I had like $50 million, I'd be like, no. Like, 20k for one seat for one seat and you're not gonna go alone right like like most people that are gonna go are going with their friends parents so let's go check out somewhere else all right so now we're up a little higher pretty close to the nosebleeds and the view is still great that's one of the okay see that's not black that not bad not bad but I would not say this is a nosebleed seat. You are here. Nosebleed seats are like the people that would be like up here. But I would also say this stadium, none of the seats are that bad. You know what I'm talking about? How some stadiums have like, it's like the, it's like the regular nosebleeds. And then they got that weird lip that goes up. And they have like fucking probably another 2,000 seats that are just ass. So one of the benefits of having it be a 65,000 seat stadium, it feels a little bit more intimate. And if you don't want to watch the game, you can also see the strip. Even though it's a pretty good seat, I think I'd rather watch from the suites. 
So let's go check those out. We're in the club suites, right on the 50 yard line. Got my popcorn. There's also all types of good stuff back there. Sushi, beer, other liquor. Oh, Smodellos. Sushi, beer, other liquor, sushi. There you say sushi, there's a lot of sushi. Hello. Hello. As chief sales officer, one of the things you're in charge of is premium seating. Right now, we're in our Twitch club level suite. These are brand new. And so what do you get in a suite like this? You have a sushi boat, beef, stadium. I feel like half of these marketing associates are just fucking unneeded. Like, if you, if this is a fucking suite that's worth a million dollars, you don't need to market that bitch, bro. You don't need, I feel like, like, this is just a take that I have. You don't need to do outreach, right? People are going to come to, it's the NFL, it's an NFL stadium. I feel like there's just going to be millionaires that are like, uh, how much is that? Oh, uh, two million, I'll buy it. Like, you're not going to need to fucking sit down and convince them. They're, like, if you're that rich to buy this, they're just going to fucking buy it. Like, you're not going to be like, huh, is this a financially stable decision? They're not worried about financial stability, right? They're good. Medium fair food. You also have your very own private suite attendant. So, you keep going? Or are you on? What's the price range? The price depends on the game, the yard line, and the size. Most suites at NFL stadiums, you, you, buy, you buy them for a season. Like, whatever whatever stadium it may be, if you have a suite that can hold 15, 20 people, you're usually spending, what, certain hundreds of hundreds of thousands of dollars. You're usually reserving it for, like, two, three years, two, three seasons. Even the best tickets on the turf. Like, I know a few people that have tickets on uh the field. Like, almost on the field. Like, the first tickets that that guy had. And you buy those for, like, three years out like outright. And then you can fucking own them even if it's a super bowl you own those tickets and then people usually end up reselling them size from twenty five thousand up to fifty five thousand we're at the 50 yard line so yes, i feel like we, we might be at a fifty five thousand yeah. dollar suite and maybe i'll just up the price today to 85 since okay. you're a jets fan all right okay that is not 55 on a regular day or the super bowl because if it's 55 on the super bowl i low-key feel like that's worth because 55 divided by 20 like, if you're bringing, like, 20 people. It's on the game, the yard line, and the size. From 25000 up to 55000 We're at the 50-yard line, so yes. I feel like... said, depending on the game. I think this is regular season, chat. I don't think this is playoff. We, we are... might be at a $55,000 yeah. suite. And maybe I'll just up the price today to eighty five. dollars since okay. you're a Jets fan. All right, I appreciate it. <laughs> but in exchange... <laughs> will you let me light the torch? No. Nobody here will no. let me light the torch. <laughs> Now I could hang here all day, but if the Twitch suite looks like this, that got me thinking. What does the owner suite look like? Let's go in and see. Woo. I feel like we're at the, the controls right here. I feel like I can... You're somebody that's ever been in a fucking NFL suite and you watch the game on the TV, I fucking hate you. I fucking hate you. Every part of my being hates you. Woo. I feel like we're at the, the controls right here. I feel like I command an NFL team from here. I gotta see where Mark Davis sits. This is a good seat. Feels like money. There's 65,000 seats in the stadium, but this, this is the one that money can't buy. This is Mark Davis's seat. These seats are very plush. There's even carpet, and they're the only white seats. Dude, imagine owning an NFL team. Imagine owning an NFL team. Like, it's, it's like, hey, what do you do for a living? I own the Las Vegas Raiders. The entire stadium. Also, because it's right on the 50-yard line, you're right in the middle of the action. And it's the finest Italian leather. Don't fact check me on that. This is what it feels like to own a football team. It's pretty sweet. Good luck getting into the owner's suite on Super Bowl Sunday, unless you're Travis Kelsey's girlfriend. You want to be in a suite on Super Bowl Sunday? <laughs> Facts. <laughs> Uh, Taylor Swift could probably fucking run over uh, an entire family and it'd be like, well, it's Taylor Swift. You better have deep pockets. Prices range from 300K all the way to 2 well, And she could buy it. Dude, even if Taylor Swift didn't have the name recognition, she's a fucking billionaire. A half million. At a lot of new stadiums, you're going to notice a giant video board in the middle of the field. One thing I noticed about Allegiant Stadium, it doesn't have that. To find out more, I hit up Matt Pasco. VP for information tech speed test technology. So a lot of stadiums brag about their huge yes, jumbotron, AT&T. Pretty good upload speed. 
sure. SoFi Stadium. We have a different philosophy. Yeah. Our philosophy is that we want your eyes and energy on the field itself. You didn't come here to watch TV, you came here to watch a football game on grass, and that's what you can do. This stadium obviously is beautiful aesthetically. The tech behind it, what are sure. some of the things that make this stadium unique from a technology standpoint? The biggest thing is, is our connectivity. We aimed to be, and, and we achieved being the most connected stadium in the world. Come on. This shows you lightning fast internet speed. Oh yeah. Everywhere you go in this building. 4,000 megabits per second. 4,000. Th four what fucking, what fucking place? Holy shit. That's four gigabytes. Four gigabytes per second. You've got absolute high speed connectivity. I'm looking for the button that lights like the- You would become the internet. Torch? It's a secret. Can you just like cough if it's that way maybe? <laughs> that sounds like a little bit like a cough. I think we're gonna head that way. Foiled again. If I have any chance of lighting that torch, my best bet's probably gonna be the Raiders president, Sandra Douglas Morgan. So here's the torch. I've been asking people all day if they'll let me light it. No. The torch, it's about 90 feet tall. Wow. It's the largest 3D printed sculpture in the world. The torch was at the Oakland Coliseum. You see the quote on there, the fire that burns the brightest and the Raiders organization is the will to win. Being able to light it and having the fans do that and having the fans from Oakland or LA understand its meaning and have it here and then people that are new. You know, we have 40 million visitors in Las Vegas and like being able to tell that story every game is wonderful. Can I get a Super Bowl prediction from me? No. All right, we've seen the seats, but it's not a true football experience without some fans. So we're gonna head to the parking lot and see how Raider Nation does it at the Black Hole tailgate. Raider Nation. Where's the suite? Where's the $2.5 million suite? It's in the house. I am Chef Dex Crew. Just cooking up wings all the time, wherever the Raiders go. Black and wings, all right? That keeps it Raiders. What are we cooking here? I'm cooking some dry beef, Santa Maria style. Try it? Yeah, I'll try it. Hell yeah. Let's go. Cheers. Hey, well, baby. Baby. So why are you Yo, they ain't showing everything, bro. You ever been at NFL pregames, motherfuckers be selling whippets and fucking balloons. Fucking nitrous oxide, dude. That's it. That's an NFL pregame, dude. Fucking buying shit and fucking what <laughs> taking the oxygen away from your fucking brain. I'm a Jets fan, and why are you a Raiders fan? You're gonna win. Still looking for Crusader Raider. I think we made it to the black hole tailgate. Are you Crusader Raider? Good afternoon, Keith Smith, Crusader Raider here at Allegiant Stadium. You've come to the crown jewels of NFL Stadium. Allegiant Stadium. What's your favorite thing about the stadium? I'm a British guy I've seen like fucking football. See, when the Raiders are there, it's the Raiders. Do you have any idea how much the most expensive seat in the Super Bowl costs? $1.2 million. That's not a bad guess. I think it's closer to $2.5 million. Wow. But you get popcorn. You do get popcorn. Oh, there we go then. Okay, that was delicious. But if I'm here for the Super Bowl, I'm gonna need something a little bit more substantial. Oh, wait, 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 is this it? Is this it? Is this it? That looks fucking disgusting. Oh my God. Is that fucking calamari on top of a fucking hot dog? What the fuck is that? What in the, in the Hunger Games fucking capital food type shit is this, dude? Somebody with a powdered face looks like they'd be like, huh? Oh, the fancy glizzy. Oh, I'll take that. Ew. Today, we probably cooked 15,000 hot dogs, about 800 pounds of king crab. We have six sushi chefs that come in just for game day to prep sushi fresh. Today in the clubs, we made 1,500 pounds of Wagyu brisket. We made 1,500 meatballs. 2,000 hamburgers, 4,000 nachos. That's so you got some Super Bowl work. food here. What is that? So these are what we call wow items. First one is a Wagyu brisket stuffed foot long hot dog. Crispy onions, barbecue sauce, banana pop. It is onions. First, I think you could do that whole thing yourself. Yeah, maybe over two days. Right here, surf and turf nacho, garlic poached lobster, <laughs> cheese. Surf and turf, turf, surf and turf nacho. We just put a whole fucking cow on top of the steak or on top of the fucking nachos. Just threw that bitch on there. Sauce, okay. Beef tenderloin. It's gonna come with a Super Bowl shot glass full of salsa. Ruined it. Just ruined it. Would have eaten it. Now I'm not eating it. Ooh. 
It's a wow, wow dish. It's a wow, you heard that? This is my personal favorite. This is a colossal potato stuffed with lobster and king crab. I said potato. Crab, macaroni, and cheese, okay? Squeeze the fresh lemon on it, and you go to town. And then last but not least, our caramelized donut sundae. I call it Sunday, S U N D A Y, because it's Super Bowl yeah, Sunday. Yeah. But, and that's got vanilla ice cream, whipped cream, a little sponge sugar. Cheers. Guy Fieri would be jealous of that. Oh, God. Guy Fieri. Don't bring up Guy Fieri. Hey, diners, drive ins and dives. Bottoms up. That's fucking sick. <laughs> Can you say the F word on camera? This is worthy of a fuck. <laughs> this is unbelievable. I'm going to take this with We're me. We're pulling up to the crab shack. They have dead rats all over, but they got some mean fucking crab. What are we cooking up today, Mac? Hey, yeah. Take care. All right. All right, see, you guys. see you at the Super Bowl. All right, we tailgated. We ate some wild food. Now let's go check out the sickest seats in the NFL. People are going to think I'm some sort of like TikToker. Twice in one hour, let's go. It's a full-blown nightclub in the end zone of Allegiant Stadium. Fans the entire north end zone. We like to think of it as doing game day the Vegas way. How do you get in here? You can either buy a ticket on winsocial.com or you can buy a table. We have 29 tables inside, obviously all the bottles. It's like taking Encore Beach Club at the hotel. A nightclub at an NFL game? And bringing it here to the stadium. What's a ticket cost versus a table? For Raider games, they're $500, and then tables, it just depends on the event. Raider okay. games can vary from 10,000 to 50,000. For the Super Bowl, a table will only run you $700,000. Well, it's funny, because I feel like most people- ah! Then you get a bottle of fucking Tito's vodka. 50 grand. You know, let me get that bottle of Grey Goose. Have somebody bring it out. That's a nightclub experience for you. That's a nightclub experience for you. Somebody, a bunch of people bring it out with a fucking flashing sign. You just wasted $5,000 on a bottle that's worth 60 bucks. Come to a football game to watch a football game. But if you're in this club... It's your could... birthday, though! <laughs> Those are the game. You're in the wrong place. If I really enjoy it, can I? Can you maybe put me on the list to come back for the Super Bowl? <laughs> yeah, right? So you're saying there's a chance. All right! I'm not usually a bottle service guy, but since they got me a table, I feel like it's only polite to accept. Let's go check that out. There it is, there it is, there it is, right there, there it is, yo. That's the experience. That up. Oh! Uh, 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 $10,000, please. Uh. What a time to be alive. We came, we saw, we conquered. We may or may not have lit in the torch. But I'll see Bottle you. Bottle girls make so much money, chat. Like. So much money. If you're a bottle girl at a fucking nightclub that gets genuine, like, movement, you are making a fucking bag. They have, it, the nightclubs in AC, I don't know, dude, Vegas is probably even different. But there, the nightclubs in AC, in the summer, you could buy big-ass bottles that are, like, fucking $700, and people tip you, are tipping you off of bringing that out for like two minutes. Like two minutes, you're getting fucking tipped. You're getting money from that. Super Bowl. This has been Clay Skipper for All Access. How does everybody- It was a good video, but I mean, we didn't really see, and unless he's talking about the $2.5 million, I think this would have been the one that was 2.5 mil because it was on a Super Bowl day. Because you can't even own the owner's suite, so that wouldn't be a $2.5 million suite because you can't even own it.